Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all again to the 21st, 27th multi millennials uh, graduation ceremony of the multi district system. <laughs> My speech today will be very brief and condensed. I will just very quickly touch on a few points I consider important for your consumption as we enter into the promised land of milk and honey. <laughs> The original intentions of the district system. Over the past 22 years, all the eyes of the world have been focused on nothing but our universal payout program. So what really is the, our universal payout program? What does it constitute? What are the details? Firstly, in 1993, I was studying at the University of Papua New Guinea, my Guinea campus, Port Mosby, when certain powerful chiefs of Bougainville came and contacted me. They requested me to become their public officer under the IPA, Investment Promotions Authority. Since the association originated from CY and the chairman was my own brother, late Hishiro Hayes, Mr. Kautai, I had no choice but to just accept the request and help out in whatever way I could. I soon found out that the association was actually registered under the NIDA, uh, National Investment Development Authority of PNG uh, by Ruben Sierra and Paul Gius Correroa associated in 1989, just before the outbreak of the Bougainville crisis. After I accepted the offer and became the public officer, the chiefs began to download onto me all the original customary uh, histories, beliefs, ideologies, philosophies, uh, customary laws, sacred words, uh, concepts, principles, counting systems, calendars, genealogies, clan and family trees, and so on. A total of five books in all, which I later developed into many more books. It took us four years between 1994 and 1998, documenting, copying, and typing everything onto the computer. I soon realized that the chiefs were actually, they were naturally born peacemakers, and their foremost agenda at the time was to mediate and make peace between Francis Honor and Joseph Kabui. They told me that they were the only capable people mm -hmm. who can reconcile and unite these two revolutionary leaders again. As the public officer, I had no choice but to just follow everything the chiefs desired or intended to do. So we documented 10 basic mediation steps and began looking for money to fund the mediation program. We wrote letters to various government departments, including working with members of parliament, foreign embassies, and high commissions, including NGOs, companies like steamships, plus United Nations, and so on, but no money ever came. Not even one tour came from our applications. The heads of departments and missions were contacting working with leaders to confirm whether our application was genuine, and working with leaders would respond saying, no way, don't give them any money. We don't know them. They are cover couch, and they have no solution whatsoever to the Bougainville crisis. That's how all our applications for funding were turned down. There was no way we could bypass those self-centered Bougainville leaders occupying those positions. As a student come NGO worker, I had no money. Even the chiefs had no money. We all had no money whatsoever to run this mediation program between governments and countries. However, through sheer persistence, we finally made some breakthrough by a corporate firm called Steve Ships Company Limited that gave us free accommodation at Cocky Port Mosby for almost two years. Our next breakthrough was with New Guinea, which provided us free tickets between Port Mosby and Buka whenever there was space available. We convinced the airline that we were peacemakers and needed free, free tickets for our travels to and from until we bring everybody, including PIG government and BIG, Bougainville Inter government, to a final resolution. That's how we finally managed to survive in an expensive city. My family was now safe in, in a rundown but free accommodation while I could fly back to Bougainville and meet up with the chiefs and go up the mountains of Keta to meet up with the revolutionary leaders. Our first attempt in 1996 to meet up with the leaders failed when then Premier late Theodore Miriam was assassinated by PNG Defense Force and Resistance Forces. We just arrived in Buka and was traveling to Arawa when news about the Premier's association 
assassination was broadcast on radio and television. The situation was so tense that I just had to return to Port Mosby and wait for the right appointed time. Finally, in 1997, I managed to fly back to Buka, met up with the association chairman, then traveled to Arawa and the jungles of Keta for two to three months. We finally met up with Vice President Joseph Kaboy on the 17th of November 1997. We recorded his approval of a 10 step mediation program and we laid the target in black and white for him to sign. We then met up with the President and Supreme Commander, French Honor, on the 19th of 12, 1997, and we also, who also approved our 10 step mediation program and gave us a letter acknowledging our presentation. After meeting with the co presidents, Honor and Tabui, and getting the support letters, we tried to find funding again for the mediation program or to no avail. Finally, on the 8th of February 1998, on our second trip to Guava, Pangona, French owner punched the final nail on the coffin as it was, as it were, saying, I have accepted your 10 step customary mediation program. The question, however, is who is going to finance your program? If BCL or CRA finances it, I'm out. I wash my hands. If PNG, Australia, New Zealand, America, World Bank, IMF, UN, or China, or international NGOs, or whosoever finances your program, I'm also out. I don't want to be part of your program. I can only be part of your program if you use your own money. It must be your own money, period, unquote. That was the turning point for me, and as I pushed, I was pushed to the very limit where I did not even know even though how the chiefs can run the mediation program without money. However, after three to four months of hard thinking, I came up with the idea of establishing the new district system. I registered it with the IPA PNG, and on the 26th of May 1998, I received my certificate of incorporation and dedicated it to the law the same day. I don't want to bore you with any more of this same old history you've heard from me before time and again. I'm just outlining these little steps so you can see clearly that the original intention of my study of the strict system was to mediate, reconcile, and unite the revolutionary leaders, French Honor and Joseph Kaboy, after the split was occasioned by the Rurangan coup in October 1996. Since that, since that was the original intention of the chiefs, we had to sign a twin kingdom agreement again between Papara and Megamu on the 18th of November 2004. Then organized a pen bogey leaders meeting here at Tonu between July 8 and two, July 12, 2006, where various leaders, politicians from ABG and Mekamui came to Tonu and signed documents under the Trump government letterhead to work together in unity. As mediators, pen chiefs had to wait patiently for 15 years for the peace agreement to expire formally on the 15th of June this year before resuming our mediation program. From this year on, on, onwards, there's nothing stopping us from uniting Bougainville. Our second intention was to repay the foreign debt our leaders in ABG sold our island for. Currently, it's 9.7 billion Kenya. We have a 3,000 page report prepared by KPMG in 2011, detailing the calculations and statistics of the debt Bougainville owes to, now owes to the World Bank, IMF, Sorry, Note that US track is concerned about three main levels of types of foreign debt, namely financial debt, treasury debt, and system debt. Our third intention was to find a way out and pay for war reparations, compensations, damages, etc. for everyone affected by the crisis. We now have a complete database collected over the past 15 years. We all, you all know that apart from the PNG Defense Force killings, we broken villains really killed and destroyed ourselves. It was our own fight. Therefore, we had to find a way around and compensate, reconcile, and pay for the war damages and reparations ourselves. Again, we can't expect foreigners like World Bank, IMF, or UN, or whosoever to come and compensate us for our own fight. We killed ourselves. Therefore, we must set up our own homegrown system and compensate ourselves because it's our own fight anyway. 
Our fourth intention was for infrastructure development and reconstruction. You know that we burned everything down to ashes, including public utilities, government buildings, wharves, airports, telecommunication facilities, powerhouses, workers, plus privately owned homes, businesses, etc. We can't expect foreigners to come and rebuild our island nation without putting us under massive foreign debts. We welcome foreigners, but we must first have our own monetary, banking, currency, financial, and economic system that can pay for their services. Our fifth intention was to finance our own freedom, independence, sovereignty, and civilization. You know that we fought against a draconian foreign control system that forced its way into our lives through colonization. We, for example, BCR forced its way, its own way into Pangona in the 1960s without, your, without our approval. When landowners protested in front of its bulldozers, armed police, OC police were used to manhandle them. You can read it for yourself in the OC newspapers of the time. Over time, we were forced to swallow everything from foreigners, including the financial debts, treasury debts, system debts, environmental destruction, pollution, plus political, governmental, religious, doctrinal, economic, financial, monetary, banking, currency, current, etc., etc. We need to be free from all foreign interpretations and arise with our own sovereign interpretations of life. We, we should congratulate our fighters for removing the entire system at the barrel of the gun. This is why we quickly set up the new system, U.S. track after the crisis, whilst our basic, whilst some basic services were flowing again from PNG to Bougainville via a peace agreement. Fellows, that's the whole idea of what independence is all about. There's no independence without self-financing. There's no independence without self-reliance or self-sustenance. There's no independence without self-empowerment or self-declaration or unilateral proclamation. There's no independence without self uh, without self-existence or self-creation or self-invention or self-innovation. There's no independence without self-motivation. There's no independence without self-rule or self-governance. There's no independence without self-education, self-lecturing, self-learning, self-tutoring, self-testing or self-examination. There's no independence without self-revelation, self-realization. There's no real independence without self-conservation or self-preservation. There's no real independence without self-curing or self-healing. There's no independence without self-actualization. I can go on and on, but I, I believe there's enough information for you to work with. Therefore, if anyone ever asks about independence again without first creating a system for self-financing, don't ever believe him. And you all know that we now, we've now completed everything, and that's why we are now uniting all factions, all factional governments, again from this year onwards. The other original intentions, 6, 7, and 8, etc., etc., were or are international, global, or universal. They fall under the run, Royal Assembly of Nations and Kingdoms. I don't have time and space to list them down here for you. I will outline them in another speech later. Now, the issue of payouts. The issue of payouts to individual clients and investors only came about due to the method we used to set up the system. We will definitely pay our clients and investors together with the above projects. Again, this that's exactly why I'm not graduating you as multi-billionaires because I'm ready to pay you out. <laughs> However, the overall pay, payout program covers all the five intentions, original intentions mentioned above. Family chiefs will not stop their noble endeavors until all the above original intentions are realized fully. All Bougainvilleans should be happy to see the governments begin to come together in unity. Nothing will stop us from uniting them because the, the, the peace agreement has already expired. There's nothing more left to divide Bougainville. It's all good news for Bougainville. <coughs> Timeline. I've explained the above scenario so you can see and understand how everything fits into Bougainville and global or universal timeline so perfectly. Firstly, you can see how, uh, how, how, how major political, economic and social changes take place in Bougainville every 15 years. Firstly, we all know that the Second World War here on Bougainville and the world ended in 1945. 
the last Japanese and Australian or American soldiers finally left Bougainville in 1945. Exactly 15 years later, in 1960, the first uprising or rebellion took place in Buka Island, North Bougainville, led by King John Tiersen. The group did not want to pay exorbitant tax to the Australian-led colonial administration in Port Mosby. They rebelled against it, and in 1962, John Tiersen and Francis Haggai and the people fought against police sent by the colonial Australian administration. The people responded and there were casualties from both sides. According to information I read on the internet and confirmed from local sources, John Tessin and Haggai were taken to Port Mosby and imprisoned. There were many anti-administration protests by various groups in Australia and finally they two their leaders were released. The rest of the history of story is history. Exactly 15 years later, on 1st of September 1975, the people and government of Bougainville made their first UNATO Declaration of Independence. The rest is history we all know about. Exactly 15 years later again, on the 1st of September, on the, on the, on the on the 17th of May 1990, French Honor led another unilateral declaration of independence. The rest is history, as we all know about. Exactly 15 years later, again, in 2005, French Honor passed on to the spirit world. And the former, former rule and reign of Joseph Cowboy's government commenced. In the same year, I came here to Tonu and launched the UV Street system on 7th of January 2005. Now, exactly 15 years later again, recently on the 15th of June 2020, Joseph Cowboy's government legal reign via peace agreement formally expired. In the same month of its expiry, I too commenced conducting our multi millionaires graduation ceremonies. So you see, over, the, over those 15 years, I've been simply preparing training and setting up things with full knowledge that when the 15 years expires, I will begin to come out and clearly and conduct my payout and provide a more sustainable, peaceful, righteous government of our island and people. <laughs> That's where we are now. You can see now how, while conducting our graduations, we are also busy reconciling and uniting all factional governments and people of Bougainville Island in line with the first original intention for you establishing the U.S. system. So far so good. Liaison with the ABG president is my trauma and his government is going very well. So far he's sent two of his members, including his member for Botuna Huriano, constituency, uh, Robert Sakaris Nunu, plus his police minister, Thomas Tari, for a couple of meetings with me. Everything is going very well, and this police minister has made another appointment for a second meeting uh, with me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs> ABC is now in the process of approving the target here. Once they approve it, there will be nothing more whatsoever stopping us from uniting the government and the people of Bougainville. We are willing to form one only powerful government of Bougainville, Mekamoy Island, and finance it ourselves. In the, new in the new government, those under the ABG will remain as House of Representatives according to the Constitution, while Mekamoy remains House of Lords, Chiefs, Elders, and, and Papala remains King and Head of State. Recently, someone asked a question on, the, on Facebook regarding the formation of the new government of Bougainville Island. He asked, how is it possible to unite a democracy with monarchy and theocracy? <coughs> the, the ABC is democratic and the twin kingdom is monarchy or theocracy. I answered him saying, the ABC constitution refers to the ABC as a house of representatives. The Mekami constitution refers to the government of, as house of lords or chiefs and elders. The Papara Constitution refers to its government as king and head of state. See how they all fit together? They were all coordinated by invisible hands to fit into each other. Everybody is happy, no one is left out of the, of the equation. Then he thanked me saying, now I understand. <laughs> Another guy continued from there saying, you can't have many constitutions and heads of governments in one government. It does not make sense. To which, I, to which I replied, brother, there's a difference between head of government and head of state. 
Head of government is appointed state. Head of state is sovereign, okay? Moreover, there are four main levels of laws in the universe. One, law of man. Two, law of nature. Three, supernatural law of cosmic powers. And number four, divine law. Our, our customary laws are linked to nature and the divine. ABG constitution falls under the law of man, and it's documented fully in a foreign language called English. Anyone educated in that language can read and understand it. Megamui constitution has three chapters, Sibungeda, Oskayan, and Megamui, in national language. But there are equivalents in all other, in all, in all other indigenous languages. All indigenous people have, can understand this constitution very well. The Papara constitution has 14 chapters. Each chapter is named after the powerful name of the divine. I won't type or mention them here because custom forbids me. <laughs> uh, Uistra Constitution has two chapters. Chapter 1 it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And chapter 2 says, love, love your neighbor just as you love yourself. So please do not worry about the different constitutions. There is no conflict between them. They all fit into each other very well. Thank you. The guy understood it very well and never responded. I'm just outlining all these things here so you can also be on your, it can be also on, on, the, on the record on, on the internet. As you know, all our questions and speeches are uploaded on the YouTube internet for the world to see. Anyone can now read, listen, and understand the process Bokeh with Mekamu is following in her rise from nothing but access to universal peace, harmony, governance, rulership, and justice to all human beings on the planet. The ratification. In one of my recent speeches, I discussed the issue of ratification. I said that PNG is not able to ratify ABG's referendum due to two main reasons. First is that PNG is a nation of thousand tribes and therefore is not willing to let go of Bougainville because it does not want to set a precedent for other mineral rich provinces to follow suit and break away. Second, and more importantly, ABG has, more, has no more bargaining power left to convince PNG. I went on to say that the only bargaining power that ABG can use to complete its process now is right here in Tonu Twin Kingdom. must join forces with the Twin Kingdom and the Restrict system if it is serious about ratification. I also went on to say that it's very easy for me to ratify the referendum of our independence. If I see this unity, within one or two weeks I can ratify ABG's referendum. All I need is unity of both governments before I can do my part. Federal ratification is only done by people with money. A poor man cannot ratify it. Only a rich king or monarch. <laughs> only a rich king or monarch can, can ratify it. And I have all the money, all the riches, all the world, all the power and authority, and the powerful universal system in my hands to ratify any request for ratification. <laughs> from ABG or from New Caledonia or West Papua or wherever out there in the world needing ratification for independence. Your help, your help is right here. Your relief is right here, here now. If you have been fighting for independence and the world powers of today, United Nations, etc., have not recognized you, do not worry anymore. Just come and I will ratify and finance your freedom, independence, and sovereignty as a nation and people. You have every right to live in the world. You have every right to be recognized in your capacity as a human being or child of God. Your answer is here now. Legal system. Many of our so-called educated kids have been brainwashed by the legal system of, the, of our colonizers. To them, legal means correct or right or true. That's one of the problems our so-called educated kids cannot easily break out from to understand what we're doing in New Extract. They think that since we are not registered under the PNG government system, we are not legal and therefore cow county. They, they also think that since our banks are not registered under the central bank of PNG, we are illegal and cow county. 
They also think that since our currency is not registered by the conventional forex system, it is illegal and cow county. They also think that since our rank, Royal Assembly of Nations Kingdoms, is not recognized by the UN, it's illegal and cow county. I'm so sad for our educated kids, so called. The education system has truly blinded everyone. Now that our system is becoming operational, we will now have to strengthen our own sovereign homegrown education system and teach our children the proper legal system they deserve to study. As you all know, the US track system has its own monetary system, banking system, currency system, financial system, economic system, political system, governing system, legal and judicial system, communication media information system, education training system, trade and commerce system, religious doctrinal system, calendar naming and counting system, defense and security system, and so on. All these things, plus many more, were put into place 15 to 20 years within in 15 to 20 years ago and now operational here at headquarters. In the next phase, when our payout goes to full, these subheadings will become even more, more full. They all go together with the progress of the overall system and the work out of our monetary system. You all know that it was the foreign legal system that legalized the destruction and pollution of our environment. It was the foreign legal system that killed our flying foxes and the indigenous birds. It was the foreign legal system that legitimized the pollution of our Java and Cameroon rivers and Pangola and South Bougainville. It was the foreign legal system that legitimized the killing of our people by the PNG Defense Force during the crisis. The PNG government legally sent the PNG Defense Force with suit to kill others. So anyone who anyone they, they shot and killed could not be compensated because the law does not, did not approve for compensation of rebels. It was the foreign legal system that called, which said, that called our landowners illegal rebels. So please, if any foreign educated children argue about the so-called legitimacy, tell them to jump in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> We are more instrument and more legal than them because the full law is with us, including the law of man, the law of nature, the supernatural law of cosmic powers, and the divine law of God. We are legalized and are legitimized by all four levels of laws in the universe. Compared with the foreign legal system, which is only legal at low level of man, but is against the cultural laws, laws of nature, laws of cosmic powers, and divine law of God. My own personal testimony is a close. In closing my short speech, I like to talk about my personal life to, just to make a point. I hope you don't mind. I was born in 1964 at the maternity ward up there, over there, on the side of the Putana Creek. As a kid, my contemporaries noticed so many differences in me that they had not seen in our other kids. I'll just mention one of them. As a child, I never ever washed naked in the river. Everyone, everyone else, everyone, including grown up kids at primary school, had no issue whatsoever with nakedness. After school, we would just rush down to the Tuning River or the Pintataino, etc., and jump into the river. Everyone would strip off and jump in, jump in there while I jumped in with my full clothes on, both my shirt and my trousers. <laughs> but I never ever removed my trousers like everyone else, and it made everybody suspicious and they all wanted to find out why I would not strip off like every other, every other one, every other people. They thought there could be something wrong with this little kid because even even big kids like grade six boys like my cousin Shemaya, they had no problems whatsoever in washing naked amongst other, other girls and so on. We, you can confirm this uh, little story from my other brother's wives, Aaron's wife, Dorcas, and let me say, uh, wife, Anna. They married to a brother, my brothers, when I was still smoking, and so might be able to confirm this with you if you ask. I decided to talk about my personal life as a child only because I wanted to let you know that I was already 50 to 100 years ahead of all my contemporaries, even as a kid. When we were one to two years of age, I was already some 50 years ahead or, or older instead of my contemporary, ahead of my contemporaries. 
I was already mature in my mind and spirit, even though in terms of age I was only a kid, say four or five years. That's why even the youth track system I established in 1998 was already some 20 to 50 years ahead of time. Everything, I, everything else, including the kingdom of Papara King, Twin Kingdom, Royal Assembly of Nations Kingdoms, the new monetary banking currency system, finance economic system, Kingdom of Heaven, including the peace mediator program I set out in 1997, were all done or completed ahead of everyone's or everybody else. When, when everybody else was caught up in the crisis, I was already setting out up a 10-step mediation program and getting endorsement from PM Bill Skate, uh, Bogomil Vice President, uh, Joseph Cowboy, and, and President, uh, President Honor. I foresaw the future and set out all these things ahead of them all. That's why today, after 22 years, when ABG is now in need of ratification, I'm now, I'm already readily available to help out. That's also why when the 15 years of the peace agreement expired on the 15th June this year, and I, I just commenced conducting a multi-millionaires graduation program. That's also why in July 2007, when I declared our new universal economic system here at Tonu, the following month, the world began to see the beginning of a global economic crisis starting from subprime issues in the USA, etc. That's also why when the nations of the world are today realizing the evil intentions of the United Nations and the World Health Organization pushing the coronavirus vaccination program, the people are beginning to open their eyes and see the solution I have for them. They now know that the un if the United Nations or the World Health Organization forcefully tries to vaccinate everybody, everybody, they still have a hope because God has already prepared for them a new 100% debt-free, independent and sovereign system called U.S. <laughs> I have prepared all these things in advance in accordance with my own birth and, and nature. I was born different as a Pukeka and I will remain different forever. Now, some time ago, in one of my speeches, I mentioned, I mentioned a, a certain guy from Bana, Nagovis, Dr. Simon Kenema. He was, how he was surprised when his professor Saint, at St. Andrews University, England, United Kingdom, told him that Hessian King Pei II was more than 50 years ahead of everyone. Dr. Kenema got an electric shock of his life because he did not expect a European professor of anthropology and sociology to have such a high respect for the king, for what the king was doing in Bougainville. He really got a shock of his life and told the story to everyone when he came home. That's how one of his brothers, a medical practitioner, Dr. Benaya, was convinced to join the new system. Many others also came because of the powerful connection. Fellow citizens, citizens uh, clients and investors, I'm just sharing all this so you can be happy because everything I told you would happen 22 years ago is now readily available for your harvesting. <laughs> we, say, we set things out for you while the enemy was still asleep. He cannot stop us anymore because the system is already operational. As I always say, the poor enemy is always late. He does not understand the mysteries of the kingdom, the mysteries of God, the mysteries of Papara, the mysteries of the Bogan crisis, revolution, and so on. Summary. Let me conclude now my short speech so I can proceed to actually conducting the actual graduation ceremony. Before I do so, let me just quickly update you on the latest with our international funds. You all know that two months ago, I converted a large amount of BBK into a US dollar overseas and have been bringing it to PNG and Bougainville since. The funds are now ready, and by next week, Rusty, I should be able to start transferring any of the funds into various funds for economies, departments, and so on. Many people, including the Macomb government and other departments here, have already sent me various government uh, quotations from Ella Motors and other supplies. There are, yes, there are also individual clients or investors who have sent me the quotations despite my advice to wait. Anyway, I don't have any problems with uh, individuals sending me quotations 
the system will still accommodate them after sorting out the government and departments. And that will begin this coming Wednesday. <laughs> I will begin working on that and see how fast we can go because the commercial of Christmas and New Year is just around the corner. I already said that you will enjoy your, Christ your convention of Christmas because the funds are now ready. <laughs> we, just see, we just see how fast we can move from next Wednesday to Christmas. At least we can start buying things that people can see and prove that it's really happening. <laughs> the important thing is to know that those funds will never ever run out. I can I can now convert I can now convert by arrangement any amount of BBK from time to time and bring foreign currency through the conventional banking system and finance our reconstruction including payouts to our individual clients and investors. If the conventional funds run out, I can still keep converting more and more funds and keep sending to my funds to the All this will happen while our final print of convertible currency is in the process of coming. When it, when it arrives on the ground, you have even more convertible funds in hard cash to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Thereafter, the full investment system will run on its own sovereignty and civilization. I hope you understand my explanations. As for the PNG clients and investors who registered for graduation, we also sort them out after this after next week, 17th of Canadian or December, onwards after the booking will state of emergency is formally lifted. Since funds are now available, we can charter as many planes as possible and fly them in for graduation. <laughs> we are reaching a very exciting time as the people and governments of Bougainville begin to unite and form one only powerful national government of Bougainville Island under the concept of one government, one country, one nation, one monetary system, one banking system, one currency system, one financial system, one economic system, one political system, one government system, one legal system, one trading commerce system, one music popular system, one defense security system, one current system, one media information communication system, and one code of ethics and so on. Amen. That's my final remarks for today and I will now proceed to the actual conducting of the 27th multi graduation ceremony. Thank you very much.